say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the we will come back to that tape when we go out of this show. <laughs> With me now in the studio is a man who spent years researching why we've lost control of our government, why we have criminals wearing police badges, why we have criminals running the judges' departments, why we have criminals sitting in black robes, handing down kangaroo rulings and laws, and patting their own pockets with your money. Welcome to the show, Michael Warnkin. Again, after what, two, three years? Seems like it. Two, three years. Last time we went up to Sacramento and filed in a federal court against who? Tell me what, I can't remember anymore. Uh, the governor, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, yes, <laughs> we, you filed against the governor to get what? Uh, more representation for California. And the judge sat on it for a year and then dismissed it without... Yeah, it was kind of interesting. Uh, in the end, uh, what he did was he made a ruling on one day, and then he waited about a week to send it to me, and then I got it uh, the following week on Thursday. So I had one day to turn around and answer, and I said, wait, no, I have two weeks from the day I receive it. Not not uh, two weeks from you know his yeah, yeah and then how did that go? Well, uh, I could have appealed it, but I let it go because there were certain mistakes that I made in the pleadings. But it was interesting because uh, it was interesting how he delayed sending you the letter. Oh yeah, yeah. Intentionally screwing you yeah from being into a position where it'd be almost impossible for you to answer, answer him. Yeah. This is the crooks, and this was a federal crook. What was this federal crook's name? Uh, uh, Magistrate Brennan. Magistrate it? Brennan, yes. Yeah. Someday they'll probably put him on the Supreme Court because <laughs> he knows how to screw Michael out of a good pleading. Yeah. He got a thing here. Michael's got a thing here. He can't read it. It's called the Historical Representation of the Board of Supervisors for Los Angeles County. Michael researches, and it shows in 1850... There used to be there used to be uh, roughly thirty five hundred people and three supervisors. Three supervisors, three of them. For three thousand five hundred people, that means each one only had to represent about a thousand people, basically. A little over a thousand people, which included babies and children and women who yes. couldn't vote in eighteen fifty. Yeah. So you're really talking about maybe. 500 or 400 actual voters for one county supervisor. Then by 1900, they had seven. They went from three to five and seven supervisors by 1900. And each of the seven represented one-seventh of 170,000 people. Wow. Today, to in... Today, there are basically 10 million people in Los Angeles County and they have five supervisors. And they've reduced it down to five supervisors. In 1909, uh, they changed uh, the political code uh, was done away with, and they came up with the government code. And the old political code actually allowed the number of supervisors to increase as the population increased. But in 1909, they did away with that, and they created government code 25,008, which says every county shall have five supervisors. So in California right now, Alpine County, which has 1,200 people, less than 1,200 people, they have yes. five supervisors. And L.A. County, with 10 million people, has five supervisors. I think Alpine County is well represented. Yes. They don't have cops who beat up people. That's right, they don't. Isn't, isn't that amazing? 
<laughs> when you have a legislative branch, you know, and I get into this, and I'm very succinct about it. We have three branches of government. We have the executive, judiciary, and the legislative. The executive branch is the most dangerous branch of government. The legislature is the most important branch. They're supposed to be more representatives of the legislature than the other branches. Today, we have more federal agencies than we have U.S. House members. Yeah, that, that's wrong, and that's, that's why we have people being beat to death by criminals hiding behind their, their police badges. Yeah, there's, uh, in, in, in just the state of California, we have 40 senators and 80 assembly members, which was what I was basically challenging in my federal court case, and we have 516 different boards, agencies, you know, the, the, the you know, Fish and Game Board, uh, Coastal Commission, 516 of these things. And yet, we only have 120 people that we actually elect. So can the 120 people actually watch the 516 boards, commissions, and, and federal agencies, or excuse me, state uh, administrative agencies? Not only no, but hell no. So, yeah, absolutely. And, and the other thing is, too, at, at the state level, uh, that's where the, the, the real big problem is. Um, you know, I, I think the smallest city, the smallest fully recognized city is Eilton, and it's got 800 people. And they have, guess what, the bare minimum. They have a mayor and four city council members. On the other end of the extreme is L.A. County, or L, excuse me, L.A. City, which has, uh, it has 3 million people, and I think it's got 15 city council members. So one for every 200,000. Uh, you know, and I, I, I did an overview of all the cities, and basically, uh, 60 to 70 percent of the cities in California have the bare bones minimum, which is five. 60 to 70 percent of our cities have just five city council members. Beyond that, uh, I think it's another 20 to 30 percent that have seven. So, like, you know, uh, Santa Barbara, they have seven. Um, and then beyond that, there are about three cities that have nine city council members. So it's Sacramento, Oakland, and Berkeley have nine. And then LA has 15. Chicago has 50. New York has 51. What we don't do is we don't add more representatives. And what we do do is we add more cops. <laughs> and it's not just cops, it's everybody who's part, everybody who's part of the executive branch of government. And yeah. let me be very clear, the executive branch executes. And sometimes they execute you, and it can be everything from, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, what are they, the, the dog catchers and any animal control to, uh, you know, cops to, uh, you know, local water boards and all the rest of it. There's nobody watching these people, and the only branch that's really made to do that is the legislature. Legislative. Yeah. And in Santa Barbara, we have 700,000 plus people, and only five. I think we have. I think we have five hundred thousand. No, seven hundred thousand people. So each supervisor has one hundred twenty thousand people. And if you go back to our founders, George Washington said thirty thousand for the U.S. House was representation. And thirty thousand. Thirty thousand for the reps. And forty thousand was tyranny. And he said that with the U.S. House, the mm -hmm. idea that two hundred years ago. Yes, the idea that we would have a local governing board, a city council, or a, a board, a, you know, supervisorial uh, um, administration for you know a county. The idea that you would have a county supervisor representing one hundred and forty thousand people. If you have seven hundred thousand, divide that by five. Right. I believe that's one hundred forty thousand. So, so this is why cops shoot and kill people. Let's be very, very, very honest. The legislative bodies are now controlled by the police. If you are a member of the city council, you cannot say boo. You cannot say no. What, you, what they're supposed to do is they have full subpoena power. It is the proper duty of a legislative body to look diligently in every affair of government and talk much about what it sees. It's meant to be the eyes, the ears, the wisdom, the will of its constituents. If, if the members of that representative body don't look diligently to every affair of government, it must leave the citizens in embarrassing, crippling ignorance of the very affairs that they should both know, understand, and direct. And that's a great quote from a U.S. Supreme Court case, uh, U.S. versus Roomley, because uh, 1953. It is the proper duty of the legislature to look into all these things. We're supposed to have taxation with representation. That was the point. So we would have taxes. We'd pay them. So we don't really have representation. So our government really isn't legitimate anymore, is it? That's a fair. That is a fair statement. Yeah. I mean, the if I, you don't have representation, and clearly we don't. David Silva had no representation. Yeah. He had nobody to turn to. And if you don't have representation, then we might as well pick up our guns. That's one way to solve it. And, and clean house like we did 225 years ago 
when King George said, I'm going to appoint your judges yeah. and I'm going to tell you what your tax rate will be. Yeah. And that was the exact reason we went to war against our own government, which at that time was the British government of King George III. That's so, exactly where we're at today. So, so let's, let's and, there's, and it's not just having an, an inadequate number of representatives. We'll take it a step further. It's all these little perverse little systems that they create that completely defeat the checks and balances. For instance, uh, uh, so let's stick with uh, the County Board of Supervisors here. So the Board of Supervisors uh, will get an alert that a cop has beat somebody up and there's now a uh, civil suit coming down the pipe. Uh, rather than the legislature, you know, which is the Board of Supervisors, calling these cops in front of them saying, what did you do? What happens is they'll have the, the, uh, the county attorney go into closed session. And they might even bring someone in the executive branch in there too. So when they go into closed session, what happens is they'll say, hey, we, we're being sued and this is what happened. They'll even, th they'll even probably tell them what cop did it, how they did it, what they did, you know, how badly they did it, and say, you know, we're facing one, two, five million dollars to pay this. And what happens is the state law that was written by R40 and 80, you know, gosh knows when, that says that uh, anything that's... It means 40 state senators and 80 state California assembly, assembly members.